Hello, and welcome to Banking Transform, the top podcast in retail banking. I'm your host, Jim Maroos, founder and CEO of the Digital Bank Report and co-publisher of the financial brand. Nearly two-thirds of consumers indicate that they manage their financial relationships predominantly on online or via their mobile device. In addition, nearly 70% of consumers feel faster payment capabilities from their current financial institution will be an important driver of future success. To address these expectations, the Federal Reserve Banks are developing FedNow to enable financial institutions of every size to provide safe and efficient instant payment options in real time, around the clock, every day of the year. We have Nick Stanzescu, Senior Vice President of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston on the Banking Transform podcast. Nick provides an update on the future introduction of the FedNow service and discusses the benefits of this service to banks as well as consumers. Despite increased interest in mobile payments and higher usage of mobile payment apps, consumers are still using traditional payment options extensively, like cash. That said, use of mobile payment options has had an extremely strong growth trajectory, especially since COVID. There's still barriers to the adoption of instant payment services, including the fear of fraud, the desire to avoid additional apps on mobile devices, and the concern around shared personal information. The objective of FedNow is to change and make all these answers and concerns go away. Nick, before we start, can you share a little bit about yourself and how the Federal Reserve Banks are hoping to change traditional consumer payment options? Uh, Jim, first off, uh, thank you for having me on your uh, podcast. Uh, So about myself, I've been working for the Federal Reserve Banks for close to 20 years now, first for the New York Fed and then for the Boston Fed for the past few years. Um, And my focus for the past uh, six years has been solely on payments, so Fedwire funds, uh, first and now on on FedNow. So I've been the business executive for the FedNow service since the inception of the service. So uh, since the service was uh, publicly first announced in, in August 2019. Um, so I spent the last three years just building the organization, engaging with the industry, defining what exactly the service will look like and supporting the build and adoption of the service. So. Um, it's been, a, I would say, a very busy <laughs> last three years. Um, yeah. In terms of the change that this service will introduce, so first of all, FedNow is a brand new payment system. We're building it new from the ground up uh, to support the next generation of payments. Uh, as was recently announced, um, the, the service will launch in mid-2023. Um, in terms of what it is, it's it's a 24-7, 365, always on, uh, real-time growth settlement system. And this is an interbank uh, payment system. Uh, it is built on uh, contemporary technologies, and it's built on a, to be a very flexible infrastructure for, for really for innovation. We also build up this payment system to be ISO 2022 native. And, and uh, for those listeners that might not be aware what ISO 2022 is, uh, a mouthful there, it, it is the native uh, language of payments. Uh, and and uh, it's standardized and also it is being adopted globally as the, uh, as the, as the overall language. Um, so with FedNow, Jim, um, gone will be the days when you have to wait hours or days for your payments to, to clear and settle. Um, you'll have access to your funds uh, immediately. And, and that's going to be very important for, for businesses and for individuals as well. So they'll be able to send and receive payments uh, instantly. But at the same time, uh, the receivers, the beneficiaries will have full access to those funds immediately. So they don't have to wait uh, for a payment to clear. They can they can access those funds. They can go out and spend those funds. So you can just imagine the benefits of that to to businesses, to to especially small businesses. It helps with their you know um, cash management. It enables them to manage their money better and to make time sensitive payments. And then from a financial institution perspective. 
uh, this is also going to happen without credit risk or without uh, without liquidity risk. So uh, they'll be able to use the services also as a springboard to provide innovative products to their to their customers to to strengthen that you know customer loyalty and to maintain and even grow their the, their market share. So you know, Jim, when you pull all of this together. Uh, we believe that uh, this new payment system is going to be, in fact, a game changer that is going to revolutionize uh, payments uh, systems uh, in the U.S. You know, it's interesting. The Fed now payment services, the first new payment rail launched in 40 years by the Fed. What prompted the decision to offer a new payment alternative, especially since there's other alternatives out there getting into the, the quick payments or instant payment field as yeah. well? So, as you know, Jim, um, the Federal Reserve has for for decades uh, provided uh, electronic payments such as, you know, Y and ACH to to help ensure that payments are safe, they're timely and efficient. So, you know, it is no different with with Fed now. Um, the, the Federal Reserve has this history of working alongside with uh, private sector providers and and really support. Uh, the, the private sector in, in the U.S. payment system. And um, in fact, there's no payment service in the in the U.S. that is uh, that has a single operator. So the same thing is, is the case for, for FedNow. Uh, we expect that FedNow is going to provide that uh, public benefit related to to safety through through uh, resilience, through through redundancy. Um, you know, allowing financial institutions to connect to multiple uh, payment systems so they have a backup. Um, you know, in case there is there is an outage, or or you know, connect to them uh, to support their 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 use cases. There is also public benefit in terms of uh, efficiency, right? So competition is healthy. Um, there is yep. also public benefit in terms of accessibility. So uh, this new payment infrastructure is going to enable financial institutions of every size across the entire U.S. And there are approximately uh, 10,000 uh, institutions out there, financial institutions, you know, banks and credit unions, and they'll be able to have access to, to instant payments in, in real time. So financial institutions are already looking at alternatives around instant payments. It, it's uh, very apparent that the innovation in the payments industry is, is faster and more aggressive than almost any other area of banking. Is there a difference between Fed now and the other alternatives, and what are you hearing from financial institutions as they look to innovate around the broader payment industry? That, that's a, that's a great question. So, you know, again, first let me start by saying that I believe that that choice in the in the market is a good thing, right? So that that's going to result in efficiencies, as I talked about, in terms of you know service quality. It's going to spur innovation. Uh, it's going to put pressure on, on, on pricing. So so again, choice choice is great. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned all these payment systems and, and on the surface from a customer's perspective, all these systems might look exactly the same, right? But actually they're quite different, you know, under the covers and especially from a financial institution's perspective. So, you know, with FedNow, each funds transfer is sent, received and settled in a matter of seconds. And, and that provides also um, immediate funds availability to, to uh, the beneficiary for the recipient. And there's also no outstanding obligation uh, between financial institutions. So I talk about credit risk and liquidity risk, right? That, that, that eliminates that. Now compare with, let's say, RTP, settlement with FedNow happens against the, the master accounts that the depository institutions hold at the, at the reserve banks. So that reduces the need to move liquidity around to, to pre-fund uh, any instant payment activity. And, you know, as compared with Zelle, for example, Zelle, Zelle is a front-end uh, uh, application that, that gives banks a P2P capability, right? So FedNow can support uh, instant clearing and settlement of, uh, of P2P as, as, you know, a rail um, underneath that front end app that, that banks will be uh, that, that will be developing, but at the same time it supports a whole lot of other uh, use cases where you know instant clearing and, and settlement have have value. So again, when you combine that with this uh, very innovative uh, new rail with with um, you know the Fed's existing relationship with 
over 10,000 financial institutions across the country, I think, you know, we have a real shot in terms of meeting that vision uh, to enable every American to have access to, to instant payments. Uh, and that could become very real. Do you see any difference in the response of financial institutions based on their size? I mean, are you going to are you right now feeling like you're appealing more to smaller institutions, larger institutions, or is there not really a difference? Yeah, um, there there are similarities, uh, Jim, and there are uh, differences as well. So, first of all, I think there is there is tremendous interest and uh, engagement in this industry. Uh, as well as a whole lot of questions. So, um, you know, we had a uh, early adopter event um, in uh, in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. So I'm probably going to reference this a couple of times because it's fresh on my mind. Um, we had around uh, 120 um, uh, financial institutions and service providers at this event. So, uh, and, and this um, were institutions that identified themselves as wanting to adopt the financial service early. And there was a lot of excitement there. So we also see a lot of interest in terms of getting involved with the pilot program for FedNow. We have, you know, 120 institutions as well of all sizes, different institutions that, that you know, have been participating in the pilot for the past couple of years. And also uh, there is a very active FedNow community with DAOs, dozens of uh, institutions and processors and service provider that they're being involved. So there's a lot of industry interest uh, and involvement with, with the service. And uh, yes, there is great engagement and exciting there, but there are some some differences, of course, So uh, of how these financial institutions are looking at the FedNow service. So, you know, large financial institutions are looking at the opportunities that this, this new products and, and innovation uh, and and uh, that FedNow could bring, and also accessing the large network of participant banks that that FedNow is gonna is gonna bring along. Then, from a smaller and medium sized type of institutions, you know, I hear more of the sense that um, this is not something that they can look away from. That this is something that is gonna root yeah. and, and take off very very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is strategic, and they cannot ignore it and be left behind. And you know, I think part of that reason is because their customers are very actively looking at their options and and access to instant payments, you know, plays highly in terms of their choice in the financial institutions that they uh, that they will uh, choose to bank with, especially in the future. Yeah. Speaking of the future, that's exactly where I was going to go. You know, when you're building something for the payments rails right now, there's so many things that are evolving and changing as we go forward. So you, you, you can't build a product or anything like that for today. You, know, you have to build it for the future. One area, obviously, with so much interest around fraud and fraud avoidance of payments of all sorts, is how will Fed now not only help mitigate fraud, but keep up with what's going on in the fraud area, but not just in fraud, but how are you going to keep up with maybe alternative currencies, all the different things that happen in payments? Because it's, it's not like it used to be that payments, it was checks and checks or checks or yeah. checks or credit cards, whatever everything else. How are you building Fed now to actually be able to evolve and be future ready? Yeah, that, that's a great question, Jim. So, um, and first of all, let me acknowledge that it is an exciting time with payment in payments, right? Oh, There's yeah. just so much change that, it, that is happening. And um, our philosophy in designing FedNow has been to take an incremental approach. So we knew there is the, the market is moving fast. We need to respond to the market. Uh, we need to meet the, the needs of our financial institutions. And that's going to change over time. So that was built into our philosophy in terms of uh, designing FedNow. So you know, release what we call release one is what's going to be available in 2023. It has a set of uh, what I'll call like foundational features for clearing and settlement of payments and support. It's a neutral pat- platform for a variety of use cases. But we're also going to look to uh, add to this uh, features and functionality very quickly as and evolve the service in, in, in very quick order based on the input and uh, feedback that we're getting from from the industry, and I'll give you an example. Um, you know, um, we are hearing a lot about you know bill pay and uh, account to account use cases, and we're going to have request for payment functionality to support bill pay and and uh, you know straight through prop 
pro processing and invoicing, but we're also hearing about the, the, you know, the P2P use case, and that is in support for alias-based payments. So we will be uh, looking in terms of how we can support that um, uh, for the FedNow service through, you know, access to a directory or or some kind of uh, some kind of different ways to to um, you know enhance the functionality of of the service. And then you talked about fraud. So fraud is is real. That there's no question that fraud <laughs> yeah. is is a topic for the for the industry, and and the industry is very much focused on it, and rightfully so. Um, and, and that's been also part of our, you know, design mindset for, for FedNow. We wanted to have sufficient fraud capabilities within uh, FedNow, so sufficient fraud mitigants capabilities within FedNow at, at release one to help institutions manage their fraud risk. Um, at the same time, we will, this is another area where we're going to look to enhance it over time, add additional capabilities to make it easier. Uh, for for institutions to to you know manage this fraud risk, um, but but it's also not just about tools and controls, right? There needs to be a lot of education that that uh, goes along uh, with, uh, with with this uh, hard tools and controls. And we're also this is another space that we're looking to work with the banks to figure out like what is going to be useful here, um, what is going to be useful in, in terms of helping them. Uh, manage and educate their their, their uh, manage their fraud risk and also educate their their customers. So around that education is great lead off to this question as well is what are some of the primary use cases that you see financial institutions going to be gravitating to and consumers gravitating to? You know, just because you build it doesn't mean a consumer or financial institution is going to come. Right. What are you? What are the primary use cases that you're really putting out there and saying? This this is this is why we're doing this. Uh, so, so first of all, I would say the the opportunities here are are really endless for for use cases. So at that Chicago early adopter event that I that I referenced, yep. um, we had a uh, a brainstorming session and we had a brainstorming whiteboard where we asked participants to post their ideas for use cases and and. <laughs> Uh, Jim, I, I wish you would have seen this. There, there's such a richness in terms of the type of cases and and the numbers. It was really st staggering there. So we had use cases that were ranging between using instant payments to 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 support uh, Girl Scout cookies sales to you know yeah. anywhere on the other side to to belt bond uh, payments. Like I guess that there is a there is a strong need there for for instant payments for that, but. Um, you know, we are seeing bill pay and uh, account to account as likely some of the early use cases um, uh, that are gonna that are gonna come up, and um, you know, B two B use cases and that of industry also comes up as well. You know, I think payroll is another area where we uh, we we anticipate a strong need. So what we see is increasingly employers recognizing that. You know, providing employees with with that instant wages helps helps in terms of um, improving customers, uh, you know, employee satisfaction, and helps in terms of recruiting efforts. So, you know, the economy works. Us can get paid every day immediately after a shift, so they can turn around and use that money to you know pay their bills, to pay their rent, auto loan, utilities, and any other bills. Um, so, and for them, that's going to allow them for consumers, that's going to allow them to, again, just be able to better manage their cash and to have timely access to liquidity to, to, to absorb any kind of unexpected, uh, expenses. So we, we, we think there's going to be a lot of development, uh, of use cases in terms of, and functionality in terms of, in terms of payroll as well, but truly Jim, um, the industry is going to innovate, uh, you know. So some of the use cases that we're seeing and that are coming up are probably just, uh, you know, scraping the surface here. I think we're going to see a lot of very interesting products that are going to be, uh, you know, built on on this instant settlement uh, capability. So you know, I mentioned the fact that you know, just because you build it doesn't mean the the consumer or the financial institution will come. Are you going to help financial institutions in actually promoting the benefits of basically instant payments and, and why it matters so that, 
you drive the consumer to ask for this from the finance institution, which obviously drives the finance institution to to use your your uh, FedNow system to to drive this. Are you going to help in the marketing and the communication of why instant payments matter to the marketplace? Jim, I will say that we already have. So we have uh, have put a lot of information and made it available publicly for financial institutions to leverage regarding um, regarding the. Um, you know, the use cases for FedNow, the why, how is this going to help, you know, businesses and, and consumers in terms of uh, their, their day-to-day lives and, and really improve those. We made that available. We have this tool called the FedNow Explorer um, that, you know, just publishes a lot of a lot of information. You can go and browse based on based on the, the, the interest there. Um, but ultimately, I think when, when I talk to financial institutions, about how to get ready for FedNow. Um, what I encourage them to to start with is why why adopt uh, why adopt instant payments and to look at their use cases for their consumers to talk to them to talk to their small businesses to businesses to figure out how their consumers are using their their institution and figure out what use cases are going to be um, applicable to them because. That's going to depend greatly between financial institution to financial institution, uh, what exactly their their you know customer base uh, is going to look to get out of uh, instant payments, and and then they know what exactly to build and how to how to uh, adopt instant payments. You know, you talk about um, meeting with financial institutions to get them prepared, and you already have test organizations out there. So what? do the financial institutions need to do today to get prepared for the innovation and the implementation of FedNow next year? And and on the alternative side of that, you know, this all makes all the sense in the world, but just because it makes sense doesn't mean that organizations are going to embrace it. What hesitation have you seen in the marketplace towards working toward the implementation of instant payments? What holds firms back? So, so, Jim, I think it's important for financial institutions or for banks and, and, and the community uh, unions to, to you know, to st- take steps now to ensure that they are able to use the FNL service when it becomes available next year. So, you know, I mentioned the, the two-day workshop for, uh, from a couple of weeks ago. Yep. It included financial institutions that plan to be early adopters of, uh, of, for the FNL service, but importantly, it also included a number of service providers. So we included them because it's important for financial institutions to be talking to the service provider about how they plan to support instant payments. They need to consider the different options for connecting with the FNL service, uh, you know, how this is gonna transform their organizations uh, to a 24-7, 365 environment. So, uh, you know, this link between financial institutions and their service provider is it's really very important because, you know, frankly speaking, there there is a whole uh, number of organizations, of so financial institutions, that are going to need their service provider to help them uh, connect and access and and uh, build on 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 FedNow. So that link is is very very important. Um, you know, in terms of um, the hesitation, um, you know, the hesitation that I I, I hear about is. Uh, primarily around the how. So I think, you know, most banks that I talk to, they they understand the need to get ready for this, the need to get ready for FedNow and instant payments. But, you know, the hesitation is around, they need to understand how to implement it. They need to uh, understand what the return on investment is and coming back to those use cases that we discussed specific to their financial institutions. They they want to understand things related to 24-7 operations and how they handle fraud. So those are the kind of where the a lot of the, the hesitation is uh, and where there are a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, uh, questions. And um, also within the FedNow program, we heard from participants that um, they have shared how, you know, instant payment implementation are complex. Um, especially to those that are in the very early stages of formulating their their instant payment strategy and deciding to, um, you know, deciding if using a service provider is the best approach or should I do it in-house or what are the technology considerations. So those are areas that banks really need to to think through in terms of how. But again, we are here to to help them with that. We're putting a lot of 
uh, information out there. Uh, and we, we have account executives and onboarding managers that are very actively working with financial institutions to help them put together that business case and figure out how they can, you know, connect to, to the service. We're very active in the space. You know, it's interesting. We, we look at all these opportunities out there and, you know, we have the laggard mentality sometimes. We still have the the early adapters, but we also have the 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 laggards or the people that say, let me see how it works first. And innovation isn't working that way now. It's faster than ever before. And the, the need to keep up or be ahead is more important than ever. And I think, you know, you've brought it up in multiple ways in the in the interview where we really have to work now towards what is going to be out there in the future because playing catch up it's not a really good strategy. You know, the the Ulcerans or the people that come later really have so much catching up to do and there's change going on throughout the process. You know, you know, getting away from financial institutions for a second, you know, fintech firms and, and big tech firms and other players may ask, what's in it for us? How do you respond to that? Well, I think, uh, Jim, the fact is um, it's it's very similar to, to financial institutions. So, um, and I mentioned it before, um, there's just a lot of opportunity in this in this space for fintechs as well. So th there is um, there's a, just a significant number of financial institutions that are not going to be able, frankly speaking, to adopt FedNow um, um, on their own. Right. So they will need um, they will need help uh, in terms of de developing front end interfaces or connecting to to FedNow uh, and and some of the more savvy institutions are going to look to to partner with fintechs rather than, than compete with fintechs. And, and uh, we're already seeing that. We, we saw that at some of our uh, events. And so there's a huge opportunity here for fintechs to figure out how they can create value, how they can create digital overlay services on top of it now, how they can partner with banks to just to make instant payments uh, available and work uh, from an end-to-end -end perspective. Um, you know, again, this is another area where we're looking to to you know support that. So we uh, we created this service provider showcase that is featuring a broad array of service providers and fintechs who who are eager to provide the, um, um, uh, solutions to financial institutions to help facilitate adoption. I think we have somewhere around you know a hundred. Um, uh, institutions in this uh, service showcase today and, and, and still going up. So it's important for fintechs to showcase themselves, to, to, to showcase the value that they can bring and, and add to instant payments uh, ecosystem. You know, this as a final question, this is going to be more to you directly as opposed to you being a spokesperson for the Fed. So I don't want to get you in trouble in this, but <laughs> what are some of the so what are some of the major trends that you will think will be seen around payments? Uh, will we see a cashless society? Will you will the future payments really evolve to new currencies? Well, how will services like buy now and pay later um, new payment options impact the marketplace going forward? And probably as an overarching question or, or answer, what role do you see the Fed playing in all these changes? Yeah, well, I appreciate you trying not to get me in trouble there. So, um, so Jim, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna offer some some personal opinions on, on, yeah. on this. So, uh, look, um, I think I, I think our some of our studies have shown there there's certainly a strong movement to uh, to electronic payments to fast electronic payments. And we expect that, and I expect that that's going to accelerate in the in the coming years. So, you know, instant payments give a lot of uh, opportunity to financial institutions to, to, to innovate for the customer base. We talked about the use cases. There, there are many there, you know, um, especially when it comes to uh, businesses and small businesses and, and you know, and consumers. Um, but I don't, personally, I don't envision cash going away. Um, mm -hmm. So, at least not in our lifetime, Jim. Uh, you, you know, uh, certainly, I'm, I'm I'm hoping that we'll see some of the check and paper activity go away in our in our lifetime. But I don't I don't see cash going away. Um, there's certainly going to be some areas of society though where you know cash usage is is going to uh, is going to to decrease. I think there's going to be there's going to continue to be a lot of innovation in the payment space. So, you know. Payment deferrals and, and short-term financing for for you know for the, especially for the small dollar purchases 
are going to allow businesses and consumers to, to, to optimize their, uh, their cash flows, right? So just like with instant payments, all these capabilities, it's about optimizing the, the cash flow and be able to, uh, to acquire goods and services. So I think that's a good thing, right? That's a positive sign that, you know, merchants are meeting the, the, the needs uh, and demands of the buyers and are willing to set some terms and conditions that the buyers are willing to, to accept. I think the caveat there is for, for you know, uh, for buyers to make sure that they don't overextend themselves, right? And, uh, you know, not put pressure on their cash flow. So this could cut both ways. Um, in terms of the Fed's role, I, I think it's going to continue, as I mentioned, in terms of uh, continue collaborating with the industry. Uh, it's been very extensive so far. I think it's going to continue to be very extensive going forward. Um, you know, we'll look to uh, how we can support innovation and in payment options through features and functionality in our financial services. So, you know, Fedwire, FedNow, you know, ACH, all our financial services will look to support that. But also, I think we'll continue to also support the industry in terms of, you know, the the extensive research that we're doing as reserve banks and and, and education. I, I continue to see our role uh, being there very strong in terms of research and, and education. And, and as well as I don't see us walking away from some of the payment system improvement, improvement initiatives that we've been leading for the past few years. So th that I think is going to continue to thrive. And that also enables us to to keep the pulse on the how the market is developing and where we can help. You know, I really appreciate you being on the show today, Nick. You know, it's interesting because you, you mentioned education. And I, I suggest to all my listeners, if you have questions about FedNow, where it's going, what it is, what you have to do as financial institutions or as solution providers to get ready for FedNow, go to the FedNow site. It is an extensive array of, of research, of, of thought cat concepts, of easy, you know, really easy to, to con consume content that really is going to help you understand why you have to be a part of this as opposed to being a, a, a laggard. Um, Nick, I, I, I said, appreciate you being on the show. And I, I, I hope, you know, it's, it's, it's different for the Fed. You know, we mentioned 40 years since you've uh, implemented a, a new service like this. Um, these, keeping on top of what's going on in the marketplace is going to be the biggest challenge, I think. It is for every organization. But uh, innovation at scale and speed is, is you know, second to none as far as being able to keep up with a consumer base that is demanding more and more and more. So, again, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for listening to Banking Transformed, the winner of three international awards for podcast excellence. If you enjoyed today's show, please be sure to give our show a five-star rating on your favorite podcast app. Also, be sure to catch my recent articles on the financial brand and the research we're doing for the Digital Bank Report. This has been a production of Evergreen Podcast. A special thank you to our producer, Leah Haslidge, audio engineer, Sean Roll Hoffman, and video producer, Will Pritz. I'm your host, Jim Maroos. Until next time, remember, when it comes to payment speed, safety and transparency are the keys to success.